Hello everyone, my name is Alexis and welcome to today's workshop instead of a class. This is sort of going to be a primer on how to do downward dog, alternatives to downward dog if you just if it's not comfortable or great for you, ways to adjust downward dog so it's more comfortable, and ways to challenge yourself in downward dog. You might want to block just in case, but we're going to get started right away in what positions can you do if downward dog is inaccessible or uncomfortable or causes pain. Now the goal of downward dog is almost to treat it like an upper body exercise. It is a full body pose, but we want to focus on our upper body. Downward dog should feel like you're about to jump into a handstand. So with all of these alternative poses, that's what we're aiming for. So of course, <laughs> the best alternative for downward dog in most cases is tabletop pose. You can get into most poses in a similar way from tabletop pose and you set it up like every other tabletop you ever do shoulders over wrists, hips over knees, strong core. If you wanna get that same upper body opener, you can come into puppy pose. This is one of my favorite alternatives for downward dog when I wanna get that same sensation in my upper body, but not put as much strain on my legs. So this is an active puppy pose. You walk your hands forward, you're pushing through the palms of your hands and relaxing your sternum to the mat. You're sliding your collarbones, excuse me, your shoulder blades down your back. And it's a great alternative. Might not work in every situation, but a great alternative for the similar for similar sensations in downward dog. Now, if it's your wrists that give you a hard time in downward dog, dolphin pose is always a great alternative. And many of the cues that we use in downward dog apply to dolphin pose as well. You're sending your sternum towards the mat, you're pushing through the shoulders. So you're pushing through your forearms to activate your shoulders. You can walk out your dolphin pose just like you can in a downward dog, and you're pushing Pushing your heels to the mat. Very similar and the bonus of dolphin pose is that it really works as a strengthener for your upper body. It's one of the best ways if you're interested in uh, headstands or shoulder stands this is one of the best prep poses for that as well. Now we're gonna come into downward dog and I'm gonna talk through the basics of alignment in downward dog. So we're gonna start from tabletop pose. Like I said, the goal of downward dog is to feel a lot of sensation in your upper body and to get a nice stretch in the legs. So we'll start in tabletop pose, shoulders over wrists, hips over knees. You're gonna curl your toes underneath, walk your hands forward a couple inches, keep the knees bent and press your booty up into the sky. Now the absolute goal in downward dog is to try and get your body in a straight line from your hands to your tailbone. And to do that, you need to push through the, the heels of your hands, glide your shoulder blades down and back, pivot your biceps so your shoulder, your, excuse me, your elbows are facing forward. Your head is relaxing so your ears are between your biceps. And then from there, you can begin to straighten the legs, keeping your spine nice and long. And if you can't straighten your legs, that is okay. Bending your knees is always the best alternative. But like I said, the goal is to get the sternum to the mat, and that, that is what enables you to have a nice straight spine and downward dog. Additionally, you want your feet hip width apart in an ideal downward dog. You want to imagine that someone has a rope attached to your tailbone and is pulling it up to the ceiling. It is a very active pose. You can see me in this video. I'm constantly adjusting myself in my downward dog. And that's just kind of what happens. So now I'm going to go through a couple modifications. If downward dog is accessible to you, but some parts feel uncomfortable or awkward. Like I said before, the easiest change that you can make while in downward dog is to bend the knees. It's what allows your spine to get long and it's not a requirement to have straight legs. Bending the knees is great. Usually we have our feet hip width apart in downward dog, but that doesn't work for all people. So you can always widen the feet as wide as the mat to give your hips more space, or you can bring your feet together until they touch. If you feel like you need more space in your shoulders, you can broaden your hands as wide as the mat as well. And a little trick that I like when I have my hands wide in downward dog is to actually turn my fingers out to about a 40 degree angle. And what this does is this helps pivot your arms open so your shoulder blades glide down your back, which helps activate all of those muscles in your upper arms. It's important to keep the shoulders away from the ears and engage your core as well to create that space in your neck that you want. If you have 
maybe shorter arms or you have a hard time getting length in your spine, you can always bring blocks under your hands. This is tricky for me because I have very long limbs, um, but you, if you are maybe shorter in stature, have a shorter, um, shorter arms in relation to your torso, blocks can really help because they'll elevate the floor up to you and help you get that length in, in your spine. Of course, that's one of the goals of Downward Dog. Additionally, if you don't have blocks or you have wrist pain, this is another great trick that I love. You can roll the front of your mat towards you just a couple times to create almost like a little shelf <laughs> with your mat, a little roll. And what you'll do is you'll place the palms of your hands, the heels of your palms, on the rolled edge of your mat and your fingers will be on the floor. And then from here, you can push in a downward dog and this helps create a little extra support in your wrists especially if you can't pull your hands back towards your elbow in a nice 90 degree like we need in plank. This little hack is a really great trick to add a little bit of extra support to your wrists and also alleviate some of the pressure that comes from all these poses on your hands. Now let's discuss ways to challenge yourself in downward dog. Um, downward dog, like I said, is a, it's a upper body focused pose, but it is using lots of big muscles throughout your entire body. If you're doing downward dog right, it should be work in your upper body. If you want to add in work in your lower body, the best trick I know is to add a block in between your thighs. You'll just bring the block in between your thighs, squeeze it with your inner thighs, and then come up into your downward dog like usual. All of the same cues apply. You're pressing through the hands, sending the sternum to the mat. You're squeezing the block with your thighs though, and this activates the whole lower body. So in activating your upper body to send your sternum to the mat and also activating the lower body to squeeze the block, this becomes a complete full body <laughs> workout. Essentially, you could hold this pose with the block a great workout very challenging really great if you want to build strength another option to challenge yourself is to come up into spidey hands um, or kind of on your tippy tippy fingers um, this again helps activate your arms helps engage your core's stabilizer muscles to keep you stable as you're balancing either on both hands up on tippy fingers or one hand or the other it's up to you, this doesn't work for everybody, um, but for other bodies, it works really great as an alternative to being on your wrists. Now, often in yoga poses, you might see a teacher cue you to say, from downward dog, come into plank. Now, when we do that, you always need to adjust yourself into your proper plank pose. Most people going from downward dog straight into plank puts them in an incorrect alignment for plank. So if your teacher cues you to flow between plank and downward dog, plank and downward dog, the first time you go into plank, set up your proper plank pose, shoulders over your wrists, tailbone lengthening towards your feet, feet hip width apart, and then from there, go back into your downward dog. And that's it. I hope this workshop was helpful and gave you some quick tips on how to adjust or change downward dog so it better suits you. If you want to see more workshops on different yoga poses like this, be sure to give it a like. Don't forget to subscribe. And until next time, have a lovely rest of your day. Bye for now.